and, and then I think probably Cape Kennedy would be our sort of main operational uh, launch site. Starbase and Florida were two competing locations to launch Starships. Two years ago, Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, announced the Starship plan, stating, I think Kennedy will sort of be our main operational launch site. However, until now, everything seems to tend to change. A thousand miles to the west of Florida, Starbase is increasingly developing and overshadowing the Kennedy Space Center, rising to become a mecca for Starship. So, what made SpaceX change their plans? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As known about SpaceX's Starship launch facilities, they currently operate two bases, one running at full capacity in Texas and one less active one in Florida. However, when Starship becomes operational regularly, only one location may be selected as the main facility for Starship launches, while the other base will primarily serve as a testing ground for rocket components. Initially in 2022, Elon Musk mentioned SpaceX's long-term plan to shift Starship activities to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the company was constructing a new launch tower with all the necessary permits for orbital launches. The South Texas location might be maintained as a research and development center, but as Starship becomes operational, the need for lively testing programs at Boca Chica Beach may decrease. While SpaceX appeared to have secured the battle for test flights from Starbase, there was speculation that Texas might lose ownership of historic future flights to Mars. However, things don't seem to go according to the scenario we thought. The new Mechazilla structure has risen in Florida, but over the past year of 2023, there haven't been significant developments. This indicates that it'll take a while before it's ready for Starship launches. Another speculation is that this launch tower might be waiting for the stability of the Starbase Tower and Starship operations to gather the best designs, ensuring the avoidance of any risks in the complex launch area, at least from NASA. In contrast to the quiet atmosphere around Starbase in Florida, Starbase showcases a vivid scene with a myriad of manufacturing, refurbishment, and preparation activities all over the coastal region. These developments highlight the clear shift from Florida to Starbase, becoming increasingly apparent. These things really make us feel the trend of changing SpaceX's focus from Florida to Starbase more and more clearly. Let's talk about the big differences that make us think of this. The most notable, which we can't overlook, is that the second Mechazilla Tower is sure to be erected at Starbase shortly. This has been confirmed by Elon Musk on X social media. The next stage of the Starship program should be called the Two Towers. Instead of our previous speculation, we can now be absolutely certain has the two towers at Starbase, and it's become even more significant as the name of the next stage in the Starship program. Not only Elon Musk, but also Kathy Luters, the director of Starbase at SpaceX, mentioned in a presentation earlier in December 2023 that the company plans to increase the pace of Starship launches from Texas rapidly. She shared, Along with adding another pad out at the site, we have our first pad, obviously, but looking at adding another pad because with the launch cadence we'd like to have, getting that second pad ready was going to be another goal that we have for this year. This is indeed necessary when it comes to SpaceX's launch speed. In 2023, SpaceX outpaced the rest of the world in the number of successful flights, showcasing their exponential growth. This trajectory implies that once SpaceX gains momentum, things tend to escalate rapidly. For Starship, the plan is to start with four or five launches in 2024 and then double the count each year, reaching milestones like 10 in 2025, 20 in 2026, and so forth. Of course, with only one launch tower, it would not be sufficient to meet the number of launches, and after each landing, SpaceX has to spend a considerable amount of time refurbishing the launch pad. This leads to a bottleneck situation during the upgrade process. Therefore, the confirmation of a second launch tower has eased our concerns to some extent. Speculation about the new tower began weeks ago, with the first signs appearing in November 2023. These were the parts of the launch tower that transported from Florida to Starbase. The exact location remains a mystery, but there are still signs that lead us to predictions closely with SpaceX's decisions. In December 2023, SpaceX's team of workers removed the historic Pad A. This wasn't regular maintenance or upgrades. Even the base of the pad was cut, indicating its discontinuation. Pad A is gone. SpaceX is considering moving Site B to Massey's. Will SpaceX place a second launch tower here? While placing a launch tower just 20 meters from a public road might not be advisable, the area under the trajectory could serve as a base for a new tank farm and flood prevention system. 
In this scenario, one team might have been working on the tank farm and water pipe system's location, while another team will independently build the foundation for the tower. Of course, this is just what I speculate. But we cannot rule out the possibility that the launch tower could also be built somewhere else. Still, in Kathy Luter's speech, she mentioned the transfer of all engine testing activities to Massey's to reduce the closure of Boca Chica Beach. She said, we're also, you know, using our Massey's test site. That test site's very critical because what it allows us to do is to keep our test operations at the Massey's test site and away from the beach. This could also indicate the possibility that we could see the construction of an entirely new launch pad at Massey's. In addition to the appearance of an additional Starship launch tower, SpaceX also has a new step that changes Starbase. SpaceX installed a brand new signboard for Starbase in early December with the inscription, Gateway to Mars. This seems to affirm that in the future, they will see it as the primary launch site for Starship, becoming a pinnacle for space enthusiasts in South Texas. Cast your mind back to 2014. Under a tent near Boca Chica Beach, just outside of Brownsville, Musk envisioned this facility, SpaceX's inaugural private site, as a potential launch pad for humanity's first steps on Mars. It very well could be the first person to go to another planet could launch from this location, Musk said. This is really going to be a kind of new spaceport that's optimized for commercial operations. Cape Canaveral and Cape Vandenberg are great launch sites, but they're military launch sites. What's important for the future of space exploration is to have a truly commercial launch site, just as we have commercial airports. It's optimized for Starship, which can transport satellites, payloads, crew, and cargo to a variety of orbits in Earth, lunar, or Martian landing sites, the company said on its site. SpaceX marked a pivotal moment with a groundbreaking ceremony for the new launch facility in September 2014, initiating soil preparations just a year later in October 2015. Starbase stands tall alongside a public road, guiding the way to a beach open to all. This road welcomes anyone offering space for parking. Beyond SpaceX's territory, demarcated by fences and private property signs, lies an open expanse for exploration. Ultimately, Starbase isn't solely a Mars gateway for individuals. It's destined to become a gateway for humanity when the time comes to explore and conquer distant planets. Currently, the current blueprint involves launching the system from both Texas and Florida, with the latter utilizing KSC's historic Pad 39A. Starbase isn't necessarily a concern for Florida, but it'll likely offer a more tailored experience given that SpaceX has full control over its own spaceport in Texas. This colossal rocket isn't limited to conventional missions like satellite launches. Its innovative design has attracted the attention of various organizations exploring alternative applications. The Department of Defense, for instance, is considering utilizing rockets like Starship to transport troops swiftly to operational zones, potentially revolutionizing transit times. In the upcoming missions, Starship and Super Heavy will lift off from Starbase, heading eastward over the Gulf of Mexico to reach orbit before returning to the pad for landing. The versatility of Starship allows it to either deploy a payload to orbit and return for a landing or venture beyond Earth's orbit toward more distant destinations. Current heavy lift rockets, including NASA's evolving space launch system, serve diverse objectives. Starship's architecture, with provisions for in-orbit refueling post-liftoff, differs from the SLS, which offers a direct trajectory to its target post-launch from Kennedy Space Center. In terms of liftoff power and payload capacity to Earth orbit, Starship seems unrivaled at present. When it comes to mass production, we often think of factories producing everyday goods like clothes, food, or beverages, or more complex items like phones or cars. Few would consider the possibility of having an assembly line for rocket production, as manufacturing rockets is far from easy. However, for SpaceX and Elon Musk, that is entirely possible. Recently, Elon Musk revealed an impressive number regarding the production speed of Starship, reaching up to 300 units per year, no different from a mass production assembly line. This represents a significant leap in technology and smashes the entire rocket industry. So, how will SpaceX and Elon make this possible? Why does it take so long? Why is manufacturing rockets so difficult? Firstly, I want to ask you a question. Why is rocket manufacturing an inherently challenging task? Like Elon Musk said before, prototypes are easy, production is hard. Let's take a look at the members of the space rocket industry, and we can see how difficult it is to create a rocket. 
the largest space agency in the United States, NASA, took almost a decade to produce rockets like the Space Shuttle or the Moon Rocket SLS, costing tens of billions of dollars. Blue Origin also took over 12 years to produce the new Glenn rocket. It's not even finished yet. The giant ULA took nine years to build Vulcan, and they couldn't even produce rocket engines for their rockets, leading to the difficulty of completing a rocket when they had to buy rocket engines from Blue Origin causing a delay of up to four years for this rocket. These are some examples to show us how difficult it is to make rockets. However, the challenges of rocket manufacturing for other companies seem unable to hinder SpaceX. They even continue to set higher goals. Recently, Elon Musk, the head of the world's largest private space company, has revealed part of the Starship plan on the X social network. Specifically, Musk said, the Super Heavy booster can be used more frequently than the ship as it returns in about six minutes and can theoretically be ready for reflight in an hour. The ship needs to complete at least one orbit, but often several have to have the ground track line to back up with the launch site, so reuse may only be daily. This means that ship production needs to be roughly an order of magnitude higher than boost production. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 per year, but ideally rising to 300 a year. This is the response Musk gave to a user on X when he was talking about Musk's boldness in producing Starship, similar to the automotive production line, a mass production approach that a SpaceX sibling company Tesla is also implementing. And because the Super Heavy booster can be reused within an hour after, while the Starship spacecraft can only be reused once a day, SpaceX will naturally have to focus on producing Starship in much larger quantities than Super Heavy. In fact, to achieve the ambition of colonizing Mars, SpaceX needs at least 1,000 Starship spacecraft. To achieve this within a decade, SpaceX's production plant needs to produce 100 spacecraft per year, equivalent to completing one spacecraft every 72 hours, meaning three days for each spacecraft to be completed. A fleet of a thousand people, each capable of carrying a hundred people, can transport 100,000 settlers or 150 megatons of cargo to Mars in the first year. With the target of 300 starships per year, SpaceX will need to meet the accelerated production demand, completing a limited number of starships in just 30 hours. Although to date, we still do not have official information about the time SpaceX needs to complete a starship prototype. Based on the continuous appearance of new parts at the ring yard, we can guess the surprisingly fast pace of SpaceX's work. The production speed will continue to increase as SpaceX is also building a million square foot factory at Starbase. In early December 2024, SpaceX's Starbase director, Kathy Luters, outlined in a presentation on expanding the facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, and the soon to be completed rocket manufacturing plant named Star Factory. The scale of this project is immense. Looters mentioned, Those anybody that's been out at Starbase, they understand we're in the middle of a major construction activity. I mean, we have a, a million square foot factory coming online and, and being built right now. We have um, home, additional homes being built in the village. So we are really working hard to figure out how we can accomplish and achieve the goals that Elon has for us to get this factory up to speed, get a new office building up to um, built, get the homes built, um, and, then, and then be moving into, you know, this kind of the fast-paced activity of us producing and launching rockets at a regular cadence. Well, it's hard to imagine how it can grow so big. But do you remember Tesla's Gigafactory? SpaceX will do something even bigger than that. They'll turn Starbase into a place that, just like its name that Elon Musk gave it, Gateway to Mars, a place that can produce thousands of spaceships capable of traveling to Mars and beyond throughout the universe. But why does Elon Musk need to build so many starships? Because he's genuinely serious about settling on Mars. It's not a joke. It's not a scam to get more government money, though Musk won't deny that. No, Mars is the reason SpaceX exists. And now, in South Texas, Musk is getting so close to Mars that he can almost smell its red soil. Let's step back for a moment to acknowledge how crazy this is. Starship is just the upper stage of SpaceX's super heavy rocket, but it's considered the weirdest new spacecraft ever built. No one has ever built a rocket that can be fully reusable, and the second stage flying into space is the hardest part. 
SpaceX still has a long way to go to turn the interior of Starship into a living space for humans on the journey to Mars. But even building a vehicle that could be fully reusable, capable of lifting 150 tons into Earth's low orbit, is a marvel. It's more massive than the Saturn V rocket of the Apollo program. Compare that to NASA and its space launch system, SLS, the large rocket that the space agency developed over a decade. In fact, NASA has thrown each SLS core stage into the ocean after a single use. And Boeing didn't even build the engines for the rocket. It uses the main engines of the 40-year-old space shuttle. Despite this, and with nearly $2 billion in annual funding from NASA, Boeing's contractor is still sluggish in activities for Artemis. On the other hand, we can't ignore SpaceX's main legacy competitor, Blue Origin. But the reality shows that BO's rocket production capabilities are extremely poor and continuously stagnant. Their highly anticipated new Glenn rocket's been in production since 2012, expected to make its first flight eight years later in 2020, but it's been delayed for four consecutive years until now. Well, we might wonder, don't they have a flying rocket? That is true, but BO also has four rockets throughout its lifetime, and it still hasn't achieved orbit. Meanwhile, SpaceX is still progressing day by day with their long-term goal of building up to 100 ships, even 300 ships in 2024. This is insane. Honestly, when I look at the space aviation landscape, no one's doing anything remotely like this. Clearly, Musk has thought about this a lot. Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with some similar projects. He lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. Luckily, the rewards are well worth the effort. Now, Tesla's Giga Shanghai reaches a massive production speed of up to 2,000 vehicles in a single day. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Musk then applied the well-worth lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line to SpaceX, and that helps their workers avoid burnout. They'll work three 12-hour days and then have a four-day weekend. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts with a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX has been throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. The company's gearing up for a crucial test flight in early spring 2024, which is the third flight after the first two space flights exploded in midair. The hope with this flight is that Starship can complete three quarters of its journey around the Earth and return to the Pacific. However, despite SpaceX's pace, there are still many skeptics. Yes, it must be said, it's pretty darn complicated. But the one thing SpaceX has shown over the last two decades is an increasing competence in building rockets. When it comes to innovation and rocket science, is there anyone better in the world? Probably not. Success is not assured. It's not. But when it comes to space and automobile production, history's shown that Musk pushes through difficult financial and technical challenges. The Falcon 1 rocket failed three times before it finally reached orbit. Tesla faced bankruptcy on several occasions. Musk has always pulled through. He now flies the most powerful rocket in the world, the Falcon Heavy, and the most cost-efficient and only reusable orbital rocket, the Falcon 9. Tesla is the world's biggest electric car company. That's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.